Good evening. I'm Jack Abraham. I'm Giacomo Smith. It's Saturday night, and welcome to Kansas Smitty's. Yeah, we're really glad you could be here. Hope you're all settled in, enjoying yourself, and getting ready um, for what we've got in store tonight. Um, so, just cool. So, what have we got tonight? What's happening? We are. Uh, Digging into the music of Thelonious Monk, uh, his his last uh, album with uh, the quartet with Charlie Rouse, uh, Ben Riley, and Larry Gales, uh, an incredible album that's um, kind of most remembered for its album cover, an incredible, uh, an incredibly detailed um, cover that has quite the story behind it. Um, but Alec Harper is here. Uh, he's How you doing, Jack? Moore? I'm I'm great. I'm glad glad to see you. Good to be on the couch. And. Um, I just wanted to speak to Alec a little bit about what it's like to play Monk's music and how um, how you kind of get into the spirit of that or how the compositions move you. Um, yeah, I think um, the first thing that, that I hear when I'm trying to understand the form is the melody. Um, I think that some of the forms, um, particularly for their time, were really, you know, they were super, super modern. They were really advanced. They were they were using very very different kind of um, structures than other compos composers were doing at the time. Um, and the thing that that really stands out is these melodies. They're they're so strong. And he's always going back and using a bit from earlier and manipulating that. Um, yeah, he's really ahead of his time. So well, that's melody. something that's something that he often does. I mean, he you'll you'll listen to a monk, you know, improvisation, mm -hmm. and he'll be kind of relentlessly quoting the melody, won't he? Yeah, but Monk solos, listen, listen out, you'll hear the melody the whole time. And I think maybe his most successful quartets, including this one, um, you'd hear that the rest of the members of the band are also playing the melody in their solos. You know, you're gonna hear that the whole time. Right. Um, right. My favorite records, for sure. That's fantastic, yeah. So uh, when you, when you, listen to Charlie Rouse and uh, you know or, or when you're performing this music I shouldn't say Charlie Rouse because actually Monk worked with a, a lot of horn players mm. um, do you feel like you're able to make the music your own or do you feel like do you find yourself being drawn into their shadow um, yeah I mean I have a lot of respect for Charlie Rouse I, 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 I love his sound it's so different to, to so many other people he's such kind of an edgy player really dig that um, I think it's impossible not to get into the aesthetic because the compositions dictate that, you know. But at the same time, I'm not really thinking of trying to play like Charlie Rouse. I'd, I'd be lost if I did because yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do that, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think you can hear the aesthetic of, of hopefully, of of, uh, of Monk because it's his it's his work, isn't it? It's his compositions, you know. Great. Thank you so. You cut me off here, man. Yeah. You know. Uh, I just want to say I have like I, I don't. I don't have the background either of, of these two guys have. So so for anyone out there who's just like, wah? Like, I'm with you. I'm right with you there. But it's fascinating for me to hear two people who are so well-versed in something, like, go deep on it. Um, for me, I, I kind of sit here and let it wash over me, and I enjoy watching the interaction between the band and the way you guys kind of get off listening and to what each other is doing. Mm. That I find endlessly fascinating. But just to sort of dip into my experience of... Of, of Monk is for me the music actually came after one scrap of paper that has informed a lot of my thinking and has definitely become like some of his writing became some like key sort of tenements to all the stuff we've done in Smitty's um, and, and he wasn't renowned for being an orator <laughs> by any means but the guy was you know a next level genius in the sense of some of the stuff he wrote down is so prescient. Like you couldn't get a business school book, all the stuff that, you know, everyone's like, everyone's writing a business book these days. But you know, this is stuff that was written by a guy who, who was a jazz musician. And these two aphorisms that stuck out for me, one is never ask for a gig, just be around. <laughs> that is, that's great advice for any walk of life. And the other one is um, a genius is the person who sounds most like themselves. Mm. And yeah. That transcended the kind of musical component. And, and he looked damn good doing it as well. Fashion, right? I mean, yeah. That helps it's to have that too. I mean, yeah. some of us got it, some of us don't, Alec. You That's right. You'll, you'll, you'll get there, mate. But you sound better than I do. So, Thank you know, you. it balances out. Thanks. I think we're going to let Alec uh, go ahead and set up now. Thanks, Alec. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up later. Yeah. Um, 
we Are really we, we really um you know we really hope that you enjoy this gig we have gigs every saturday this month moving forward um you can find out about all of those online uh, but i'll just tell you briefly what we're what we're doing we're doing uh the music of sydney bechet in france next saturday night which is a it's, it's kind of an, an amazing it's an amazing comeback story you know because you spend your whole life kind of as one of one of the the original sons of New Orleans jazz music, um, and then moved to France and become a national hero. I mean, they called him the King of France, you know. Mm. Um, better late than never, you know. And then, um, and then we have on uh, the following Saturday, Kit Downs, Daisy George, Jazz Kayser, Alex Ridow, and myself coming back to do uh, Clifford Brown and Max Roach uh, quintet selection of their music. And then on uh, the Saturday after that, do you remember? Uh, yeah, I do. It's um, the Keith Jarrett record. Yeah. Right? With Joe and Jazz and Will. you yeah. and Will. Yeah. Um, once again, an amazing figure. I have a, I have a kind of a, a pushback, you know, when I'm programming these nights, which is against the this 1960 to 65 range of jazz concerts. Now, those of you who know me have heard me go on about this, but I don't. I don't believe that that period is, uh, I, I do believe that it's the golden age of jazz. You know, it's a, it is a golden age of jazz, but it's uh, certainly overrepresented, right? We always hear about 1959, the year that changed jazz, and it was all downhill from there. Well, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't. And, it, and there, was a big, there was a big bunch of music before that and a big bunch of music after that. So, you know, keep coming back here to Smitty's to, to find those gems throughout the canon. And if you disagree with Giacomo, Please write it in the YouTube comments because I will be there <laughs> and we can get into this. If you think 1961 was the greatest year of jazz, yeah, man. we want to hear from you. Absolutely. And Giacomo's home address is... <laughs> no, we got to get to the music tonight. But if you're... Yeah, do check out the comments. We'll be in there in between. And uh, yeah, let's get out of their way.
Thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in to Kansas Smitty's KSTV. Pleasure to be here playing the music of Thelonious Monk, one of my favorite composers. Hopefully one of your favorite composers too, if you've tuned in. Um, and if you've never heard him, then you're in for a treat. We've got the wonderful Deschanel Gordon on piano. We've got Will Sash on the double bass, and we've got Will Cleesby on the drums. We've got a special guest coming in later. I'll introduce her in a bit. My name is Alec Harper, and we're playing the music from Thelonious Monk's Underground. The first track we played was entitled Thelonious, and that last one we did was a ballad called Ugly Beauty, which is really actually one of my favorite tunes. Very We're going to move on now with a blues. This one's entitled Raise Four. <laughs> Thank you. 
and that is how it goes. Yeah. Sounding beautiful, guys. Sounding amazing. You're at Kansas Smitty's. Um, we hope you're having a great time. It's incredible to see so many of you uh, here. We, we've, we've had, you know, 80 people kind of the whole time. And, um, you know, we've, we've been, you know, we've been making music here for, for basically a year now. And um, we're, we're really kind of paring down things to one night a week and really focusing on um, giving you this, this kind of um, larger than larger than Smitty's concert. And it's, it's so nice of you all to be here and to come over from Facebook. And, um, you know, thanks to Adrian and Jack and all of you who've come from Reddit through Ella and Will. And, and it's just, uh, it, it kind of brings me back to when we were on Broadway, you know, having a room full of people talking and enjoying the music. So I just want to, um, you know, Ozzy always uh, reads out comments and I, and I love kind mm -hmm. of highlighting the conversations that that we've been having while the music's going on. Uh, one that I really, you know, uh, enjoyed just recently was uh, something that Pamela Poland said. Um, you know, Thelonious Monk is rather modern for me, but I like him. And I and I think that's a really I was I wrote back to Pamela on that, and I think that I think that's a really interesting comment because Monk is simultaneously modern and traditional. You know, he has. He has all of these former influences in his playing that you can hear, but at the same time, he's rewriting the book on piano playing. And for a, you know, a relatively, well, it's a, uh, he was he was out of the game basically by 1970 because he had a, a lot of, um, you know, mental health problems that actually never were diagnosed. It was speculated that he had schizophrenia or other disorders. Um, but in a in a career that was basically from the mid 40s up until 1970. Um, he changed the face of, of what the jazz piano sounds like, and um, I think that's an incredible thing. So um, there are a lot of other great comments in there, but I don't want to take up too much time. Um, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, one of the I almost chimed. I almost cut across Jack and to say what's really cool about this is that twice as many people have been watching this show than could ever fit in our old bar on Broadway Market. <laughs> um, so that's that's probably a result on balance. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say that at some point we want to open another bar. Um, that's our goal. Our mission is to um, build this new space, um, an online space, and we've learned a huge amount over the last year doing that. Um, and it's been incredible connecting with so many people through this medium. You know, looking at that list of, of people on the comments, there's people there that I, you know, would consider my friend. I only know from doing this, this process. Um, that that would never happen if I if we'd stayed on Broadway Market. We had to leave there. We can never go back to Broadway Market. That's something that you know doesn't get easier to say every time that no, I it say it. Yeah, um, still hard to believe. Yeah, all the memories of and all the things that happened there. But what we want to do is open a new music venue, a new Kansas Smitty's in London, in East London. Um, hopefully this this side of uh, 2022 but we'll see that's what we're working towards but to get there it's a there's a long road and and we're very grateful some of you might know that uh, yesterday as it was announced um we received some of the uh, the, the cultural relief fund round two ding 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 yeah. it's amazing thank you very very thank much you. arts thank council you. um yeah so that was amazing that gives us stability to keep building this to keep working with this amazing team that have discovered us and and the, the it's a pleasure to work with every single time uh, we come in uh, and to keep working with these incredible musicians but it's still a long way to go um, and we want to bring ultimately everything we've learned in the last year into a room together with everything we spent the previous five years learning on Broadway Market uh, so to do that we still need people's help we still need everyone to get behind this if you can so if you are able to please keep uh, donating, check out the PayPal link in the box, or if you're into it, join the Patreon. We're putting out some really cool records through that now as well, which is probably more our wheelhouse. Um, but also, if if that's not possible, I mean, it's a tough time for everybody, tell people about what we're doing here. It's really the communities that have joined tonight, you know, Ella's Reddit millions, uh, mm -hmm. and, and Adrian Cox's uh, gang. Like, that. what's incredible about those communities is that you know, you guys are, are self-sustaining and, and we're trying to do the similar thing here. So we really appreciate your support. If you can't contribute financially, tell your friends. We really need that support right now to get us where we want to go. And one day, soon, hopefully, you'll be able to come and, and have a julep at Kansas Smitty's and listen to this band. That's the goal. So enjoy the music. 
keep chatting to us in the comments. Keep chatting to your friends. Share the music online and enjoy the show. to tell round midnight round midnight I do pretty well till after sunset supper time I'm feeling sad but it really gets bad round midnight Haven't got the heart to stand those memories when my heart is still with you. Oh, midnight knows it too. When a quarrel we've had needs mending. Doesn't mean that our love is ending Darling, I need you Lately I find You're out of my head And I'm out of my mind Let our love take wing Round Let the angels sing for your returning When our love is safe and sound Old midnight comes around
Oh. <laughs> thought seeing as this was a um, seeing as this was a Thelonious Monk celebration um, I felt like I should speak to um, our pianist for this evening the amazing Deschanel Gordon um, sounding incredible tonight man beautiful beautiful um, so you know I don't want to put you on the spot too much because I know that Monk is is a, a looms large in in the world of jazz pianists um, but when you're when you're playing this music, I mean, how do you how do you interact with it? Do you do you feel like um, you're thinking of him all the time, or do you feel like you can just kind of stretch out as yourself in these compositions? I think you're definitely the the first thing he said. I it's definitely a way of playing approaching monk. I think maybe in the twenty years time I can stretch out on my own thing, but I think. Yeah, it's definitely how he plays the melodies. It's, it's very specific, his approach. And I think to play his music, you have to at least um, at least attempt or learn to, you know, learn that sort of way of playing. Right. Is that something that you've... You, have you spent a lot of time with his music? Is he one of your your gurus? Yes, yeah, especially when I was younger, I just found that his music just had this, like, playful quality that really attracted me when I was younger. So I listened to him loads. And just, yeah, super quirky and... Just fun to listen to. Right, right. There's a lot of humor in there in addition to the genius, right? It's, yeah. it's tempered, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Um, so what's, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of like the interaction between, you know, voicings and, and you know, hands and stuff, what's, what's Monk's kind of, is there, is there something that piano players go, oh, that's Monk? Oh, that's, is there a vo particular voicing or structure that, like in, in a kind of a technical way, that you can say, or is it, is it many things? I think it's, there's many things, but they're all like very identifiable. Right. So like that's Monk, or if, if, even if someone's playing, you can be like, oh, that's inspired by Monk. Right. There's a certain way how he makes dissonant sound beautiful. I don't know how he does right. it. Right, right. But yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Deschanel Gordon. Um, what's the next tune? Green chimneys. And, uh, just thought we should introduce a wonderful singer who just sang. That was Ella Honan Ford. She's going to be coming back uh, for our last one. Um, so you're going to hear from her again. We'll introduce her again. Um, but yeah, the next one's Green Chimneys. Great. Thanks, Dash.
Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch this music with you. And I wish you could all be here in the studio with me, but I'm very, very grateful to have the opportunity to share it with you through this wonderful platform. Clap your hands loudly and make noise for this incredible band. Deschanel Gordon on the piano. Will Sash on the double bass. Will Cleesby on the drums. Alec Harper on the saxophone. And our very special guest for this evening, who's going to be joining us again uh, for the last tune, is Ella Honan Ford on vocals. Uh, I also want to shout out to our director, Ali, our crew, and uh, the whole Kansas Smitty's team who yeah. make this all possible. Yeah. Um, so um, big thank you to them. Uh, I saw in the chat that people were really digging green chimneys. And um, Kathy, that we'll, we'll get that on that, um, that um, Patreon playlist album for you. Interestingly, that tune, I don't know if the band knew this as well, but that tune was named after uh, the school that Monk's daughter went to. I guess they had some green chimneys there. So um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're going to let the band play us out. This is In Walked Bud. And Ella, I think, has some things to tell you about the lyrics. So um, set your reminders for next week. Uh, we're going to be playing the music of Sidney Bechet uh, in Paris with Pete Horsfall, Dan Hyam, Will Barry, Tom Farmer. Willsby, are you on that? Yeah. Willsby on drums. I'm going to be playing the soprano. Uh, set your reminders now. Come through. We'll, we'll be here on YouTube at 8 p.m. London time. See you there. Well, seeing as we are featuring lyrics this evening, I thought I'd uh, take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about what they are. Um, those lyrics to Round Midnight, I think were written by Bernie Hannigan, who um, you might know him from Singing in the Rain if you're into musicals. That's a, it's a great film. and. Um, on the record, the wonderful John Hendricks sings some lyrics that he wrote, I believe. Um, but we are lucky enough to have um, Rosie Bullen rewrite some new lyrics. And she is a, a great uh, enthusiast and has studied John Hendricks loads. So it's really cool to have a more contemporary interpretation of what maybe he would have done. World premiere. World premiere of these lyrics. She sent them to me a few days ago. So, Rosie, if you're listening, thank you so much for those. Um, and uh, so this is In Walked Bud, but retitled In Walked Love. Thank oh. you. Oh. <laughs> it's going to get warm. When we met in Walk Love, yeah. saw you and I knew T for two was due. Oh, when I'm near you, the moment we met in Walk Love, when I look back, the world was black and I was down. Now that you're here, everything's clear, never a frown. One look. That's all it took And now in my book The world is shook And I am hooked I can't get enough The moment for didn't walk love
said enough The moment we met in walk love Saw you and I knew T for two was do I feel brand new and I can't get enough The moment we met in walk love When I look back the world was black Now that I'm hooked, I can't get enough The moment we